I'm gonna build a faster XP farm than anyone has ever made. It used to be the Guardian farm, but not anymore. Step one, I'm gonna need sand. Lots and lots of sand. So I'd better get busy. That's one. And that's 50. Next, I need gunpowder. This creeper farm is okay, but the EOL farm is way, way better. Now with 62 of these, I can craft 20,000 TNT. Step two, I need a woodland mansion. This guy will give me a map, and after 10,000 blocks, I've found the mansion. Now to build a portal, a track, Catch two evokers and send them through the portal to my house. Step three, Operation Powdered Snow. It can be found in two biomes, neither of which are easy to find. Finally, the snowy slopes. Here's some powdered snow, all collected and taken home. Step four, show my brand new post- Okay, okay, maybe that's not part of the plan. But it is for sale on sp737.store. I signed every single one and left them to dry on my bed. The limited edition, so once they're sold out, they're gone forever. Now the real step four is to put an hour timer on screen. And if I can get 100 diamonds, you have to subscribe. You'll soon see how all of this is useful. Let's go down here. And now this is one epic cave. I'd better get busy. That's diamond number one, and another two here, plus more underwater. Wow, they're just everywhere. That's 64, but now that I've explored all of this cave, it's still gonna be a challenge getting 100. More ores right here, some over there, and surely this cave <laughs> has what I need. Oh my goodness, found a not chapel. And that's one more, or should I say two. But time is starting to run out. I only need 11 in the next 12 minutes. In fact, make that seven. And so the odds are starting to be in my favor. Getting closer and closer. Less than five minutes to go. And I still have to try and find two more. Come on. Yes, we got it. 100 diamonds in 56 minutes. Now you have to subscribe. Step five is to make a perimeter. This is the spot that it's gonna be. I'll mark out the entire area and drain all of the water. Mission accomplished. Now to grab the materials to blow it all up. The materials I need are slime, pistons, glass, redstone, glowstone, coral, rails, walls, and TNT. Then I can start building. And with that done, I have five more to go. Looking good. Now I've just got one left. Mission accomplished. Now to build the return pads at the other end. These just make it so that the TNT machine gets sent back along. And I have to build one of these opposite every single one of those. Simple enough. There we go. And then I need to quickly head back home, grab some sponge and drain a bit more of this river. And now I think I'm ready to set all of these off. And Operation Digger Perimeter <laughs> is in full force. Also just realized I missed a bit of what- Okay, SP, this could be bad. Grab the sponge, get out of here. <laughs> Did not want TNT to be landing on my head there. I completely screwed up here. This mound's a bit high and uh, <laughs> it should have been removed. So I guess I'll get to work on slightly cutting it back. And that's as much as I think I need to mine. Also got to keep an eye out for water and lava since that would mess up the TNT. Quickly going to pause these to grab coral to fix this. Now I'll set it off as well as the rest. And all the rest can also be set off. Starting to get down to lava levels now, which means nipping back home, grabbing scaffolding, plus crafting a few more, then removing a bunch of lava and obsidian. Mission accomplished, so I'll continue blowing things up. Plus I'm finding quite a few diamonds on the way as well. Not an ideal situation to be in. Next time, I mean to make sure I don't fly straight under falling TNT. Top half is getting closer and closer. The only job I have left is to get rid of this mountain. So that it doesn't block that flying machine. And that is job done. I desperately need to repair my tools. And I could have made this XP farm over an ocean. But having it by an outpost is going to be so, so useful. You'll soon see why. But first things first, I better get repairing. Next on the agenda involves this outpost because it's going to need to be completely removed along with part of this mountain. And now I can build the pillager captain bank. It should also be said that I'm not building a normal raid farm to make this world record XP farm. I will explain XP farm mechanics a little bit later on, but their main limit is that the player can only absorb 10 of those little orbs every second. So that means you can't just spawn more mobs, get more XP orbs and have a faster XP farm since the player wouldn't be able to pick it all up. Instead you have to farm mobs that drop higher value XP orbs, which is why up until today Guardian farms were the fastest. That's possible in recent versions anyway. A super fast dragon farm hasn't been shown to be possible since 1.10 since no one has been able to get Ray's Works dragon farm to work in recent versions of Minecraft. The idea is that pillagers will spawn on here and then water will then push them off. 
That's the platforms done. Now for the redstone, which will just be on a simple enough clock. And adding scaffolding is going to make a big difference as well. Mission accomplished. Now to add the AFK platform, which is 128 blocks off the ground. And also the collection system. That's all nicely marked out. So now I just need to add water. And by changing these to be slabs, they'll all get pushed down perfectly. Meaning I can now build my glass cage. This is the glass chute. The pillagers will fall down. And I need a system that will stop them from despawning at the bottom. Because when they're this far away and they're idle, they can do that. And the system I'm going to use for that will involve rails. The system's slowly getting there, but I need more blocks. So there'll be pointer minecarts down here so they don't despawn. Then they will be sent all the way up this track where they'll stack up and I will be able to sort them by either sending them one way or another. This way we'll have a cactus at the bottom with the hopper minecart underneath to collect the minecarts. And in this direction all the captains will be sent, dropped down here and pushed along by water. Whether this actually all works, I'm about to find out. Bottom here, the minecart will be sent this way, drop down and slowly, slowly float along. Got an idea to make it faster. That idea does involve quickly going back home, grabbing some materials and replacing the concrete with blue ice. And it, it made no difference. Not to worry, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things anyway. And now to make this farm work exactly as it should do, this mountain has got to go. I'm, I'm sorry, I know it's a big job, but I, I've unfortunately got no choice. So I'll repair my tools, put my best foot forward, build a beacon and get busy mining. That was some project, but in order to finish it, I'll have to go home again, grab more grass and stone, craft a new silt touch pickaxe because my other one broke, and now I must repair everything else. Time for a few extra repairs, covering up the water, tidying the mountain, and spawn proofing everything. This is going to require a lot of buttons. It's looking pretty crazy, but also very, very cool. I place buttons all the areas the pillagers can spawn, but outside of that area is where normal mobs could be. So that means I've got to light up the area. I think that's all that I need to do. Let's get a load of mine carts, turn off the mob switch, add a load of minecarts, and AFK up here to test this farm out. Already a couple of pillagers have spawned. I guess I needed a few more buttons. <laughs> Just give me one second. That should solve the problem. AFK time, take two. It'll also help if I actually turn the machine on. There's already loads of them here, but none of them are captains, which means they get sent... Okay, they're, well, they're dying in it. I, I need to make that a hay bale. Thankfully, that can be stolen from this village. All of these can be sent down there. This adjusted, more moved through. Minecarts then grabbed and placed. And change of plan, because it's a thunderstorm, I want to quickly go to this farm so I can get more mobs. Mob heads. I've got loads of creepers, I've got loads of mobs. Unfortunately, the thunderstorm ended before the lightning could strike. Instead, it's now just boring old rain. So Operation Get Pillager Captains is back on. Let's go see what we've got. Looks like a good haul with some captains. So let's start sorting them. The system's worked pretty well. That's captain number two into the bank. Don't know how this guy got here. Let's get rid of you. And I can grab the minecarts and repeat the whole thing again. I just have an idea to make it a little bit better. That is by grabbing more glass. Then I can box things in here a little bit so that I don't get hit with arrows by the pillagers. Plus, I think something like this will be smart. All of that should stop pillagers from being able to shoot me and make everything work even better. I was also trying to work out what I did with my armor. So let's say I look back at the footage, realize I put it in here for some unknown reason. No captain so far, but let's open things up. And now that they can't shoot me, it is way, way better. Apparently the glass is causing all sorts of congestion issues. So I guess I'm going to have to remove it. On the positive side, we've now got a captain. So things are working well. Now I'll just continue to get loads and loads more. Done a few cycles with the farm. Slowly getting more captains. But this time, absolutely love Loads have come down, so I'm sending them through and then sorting them out. That one can go along there, and so can you, and all the rest of them as well. Has to be said, it's a pretty cool system. I'll try and get one or two more, and then I'll have all that I need. That's the final one that I'm gonna capture. Plenty of captains here for when I need them. And that also means the mob switch can go back on. And now I want to make a use for all of these diamond doors. The use will involve some stone bricks. I'm now gonna try and make a bit of a pathway that connects from this area to the uh, the partly finished perimeter. And on this pathway, there's going to be a brand new structure. It has to be said, it doesn't look half bad. I think it's because it's diamonds, it, it looks better. And I reckon the perfect place to make this new building that is going to be very useful next to an XP farm is going to be right where this little hill is, so I'd, uh, I'd better get rid of it. I seem to have done nothing but destroy terrain in this video. And I can use all the extra blocks from that to, to fill in this dried up river. Sorry, pig, but you are going to be trapped underground for the rest of your life. Maybe I'll dig him up and discover him in about 10 years' time. 
time. Almost done. Just gotta change this stone to be grass. There we go. It's looking pretty good. Now to extend the pathway. The pathway is also complete. Having said that, this, this corner looks a little bit strange. I'll just make it a little rounder. That's much better. And this is where the entrance to the building will be. Now to create this building, which will require quite a few new resources. That's everything. I'm about to build a giant one of these. I've marked out where it's going to go. So now to fill in all of this. Now to build up all of the corners. Now to connect all of these up. Now to fill in the sides. As you can see, this is decorated nicely with diamonds and stuff. This is actually turning out to be quite the expensive build. Now to do the bits in between. All decorations done, but now I need to repeat it on all the other sides. And I'm not going to have enough diamonds for it. Meaning I'll have to mine more and craft more blocks. Run out of coal blocks I have. However, very conveniently, I have this massive perimeter with loads of ores exposed. Meaning I can grab all the items that I need. I'm hoping that should do it. Time to get back to work. Also, what are you selling? Anything good? No, useless as usual. You are the most pointless thing in the entire game. Gonna need a few more diamonds. That's the decorational bits complete. Now to crack on with the top, which is unfortunately just as expensive with the diamond blocks. But hey, I might as well use them for bills like this because I'm not gonna use them for anything else, am I? Now to add more of this on the inside. Now things are much easier because all of this is filled in with nether brick. Nether brick, which I had just enough of. That was perfection. And the sides are also very easy because they are just complete obsidian. That's job done. I'll carve out a little entranceway, change the position of the pathway, kill the trespassers, and there we have it. Although we don't yet have it because I need to build the book that goes on top. Just like that one down there. It's going to have a hardened clay bit along like this. And it needs to be extended all the way back. The cover of the book is now being done and it's going to be the same on both sides. The orange ones get extended. Pretty straightforward. And the yellow is a little different because it's kind of just the terracotta with wool at both ends. I've also completely run out of orange terracotta, so I'd better craft some more. And our work can continue. That's the cover done. Now to do the pages, which will have light gray wool on that's meant to be writing. And there we have it. Mission accomplished. Outside is complete and I like the look of it very much indeed. Now to go and collect the resources for the interior. So this is where some of the things are gonna be built. I'm just making a nice little island and this can go on top. The reason it's over there and not in the center is because there isn't a, a singular central block and my, my OCD couldn't handle it. I feel like it'll just be way better. I ran out of disk space, so I was talking to myself the last five minutes. But I've built two islands and I've kind of got them hovering and then I've created this down here, loads of carpets with torches underneath. And that's because I'm going to be creating some fogged up glass. The main thing to create that fogged up effect is that you have to have layers of glass with a gap between. But of course, as I add the glass, I'm also going to make the walls look a bit better by changing them to obsidian. Also, yes, recording hundreds and hundreds of days in Minecraft does use up a lot of disk space. It's changing these islands to obsidian that's going to be the most annoying part. A very slow and steady job. It has to be said, it looks very, very cool the way it's fogged up. But there's one thing I can do to make it look even better. And that's to turn on connected textures. And now... It looks really, really eerie. So now I think I'm ready to start adding bookshelves. Kind of looking good, but I want it to look like they're hanging from something. So I'll craft some panes. I can just kind of do some random building on top. And they should go up all the way to the roof. Not bad. On this side, I just very simply like an anvil, plus a couple of grindstones, decorated up, dark oak doors on the entrance, crafting table and ender chest because they always come in handy, and some regular chests to store things. Now I'll have everything that I need for when I get loads and loads of XP, I'll just be right on hand. One extra thing I might as well do is extend this pathway to go over towards that portal. At the moment, it just kind of stops in the middle of nowhere. Didn't expect to say this, but I've run out of deep slate diamonds. So the main thing I'll focus on for now is spawn proofing this path. And I'll double check to see if I have any spare ones. The answer is no, I most certainly don't. And so I only see one solution. As I continue phase two of the perimeter, it will expose deep slate diamond ore right at the bottom of the world. And when it does, I can mine it up and add it to the pathway. But before that can be sorted, these machines need to be dismantled and built lower down. I'm hoping that that shouldn't take too long. Wow, that looks really cool from up here. I'm impressed with my handiwork. Almost takes as long to dismantle these as it does to build them in the first place. But that's now five down and one to go. And now the next priority is to remove the return pads. That part was a much faster job. A little bit of trimming back is needed so that the slime machines do not get caught on any of the walls. And with that, I'm ready for phase two of building. There we go. Now I've got to do the return pads and they should be nice and quick as always mission accomplished i can start setting them off and as i was breaking the redstone i accidentally broke a bit of slime on this one hopefully i can fix it 
before that one gets back. Although it's not looking good. I'll just set the other ones off. And as time goes on, I can keep removing the lava. Plus mine up the exposed diamonds that appear in order to finish the path all the way up here. Well, I can't worry about that. The priority is to get this whole perimeter now completed. And there we have it. The perimeter is pretty much complete. And one thing I am going to need for the XP farm is quite a few villagers. So I'll give them a bit of bread that will then hopefully lead to baby villagers. As I explained earlier, I need more valuable XP orbs to make a faster XP farm due to how fast the player can absorb XP. So Ravagers and Withers are the only two mobs that drop more XP than a Guardian. I haven't got a farm to get enough Withers fast enough to get XP faster than the player can absorb it, but with Ravagers, with a crazy good raid farm, and then if you isolate the Ravagers, it is very, very doable indeed. Also got a good amount of diamonds to finish this pathway, which has been a nice side bonus. I'm also going to grab buttons to spawn proof it all. There has to be absolutely no spawnable blocks anywhere in here, otherwise the farm will definitely not work. I'm not really sure how the TNT missed all this, to be honest. There's, uh, there's quite a few down here. My best option is to go over this chunk by chunk, removing any spawnable blocks. Pretty sure everything is now spawn proofed. Every block meticulously <laughs> removed. This one here got a little bit stuck, so I'll just leave it behind. And building this farm is going to take a lot of materials. It is based off of Kronos Raid Farm V3. But someone known as Garlic Bread has made modifications to it to make it the fastest XP farm. I, I kind of gave them the idea. They executed it and helped, uh, helped me out with it. So make sure you go and subscribe to them. I will link them in the description because they are way smarter than me and I would not have worked out how to do it. But it's, it's a very, very, very cool farm requiring a lot of materials. So I'd uh, I'd better get busy. Interestingly, not quite as many materials as the old raid farm. The, the, I think I did the V2 Cronus raid farm. I will make it a collection system either, which is going to make life a lot easier. And on top of all that, I have completely run out of firework rockets, so I had to get back the old-fashioned way. The main material needed is going to be glass. I'm going to need three shulker boxes worth of that. Don't have that much at the moment. And I currently have two good ways to get glass. I can have a smelt sand, which I, I guess I can do a bit of that by putting it into the double chest. And it'll all filter into this chest. The beauty of it is there is a chunk loader running, so it'll just keep going whilst I'm not there. Meaning in the meantime, I can travel all the way down here to get to the end. And from there, the hope and the plan is to be able to do some void trading. It's librarians that sometimes offer it, but the quest... Oh my god, I don't have the resources to trade with you, do I? Just one moment, I'll, uh, I'll be back. Back when I've got plenty more sugarcane, since paper is a much needed commodity. Here we go again. I really hope that you actually do give the glass trade, because I don't think they always do 100%. I knew I should have brought some books. That's about as much as I can do. What a pain of a villager you really are. So I need to grab that. Craft some books. Once again, go all the way back. Trade them across. And thank goodness you're offering glass. Otherwise, that could have been a very, very long process. But it could have been a massive waste of time, basically. Instead, I can now grab a bunch of emeralds and begin the process of void trading. This is actually going to get me so much glass very, very fast. Managed to max out my inventory already. I, I get loads from this guy. I'll just keep going until there's a full shulker box. I think it's because it's four glass for every emerald. The XP also meant that my pickaxe is completely repaired now, which is quite nice. And in my opinion, that is more than enough glass. Let's send you back. In the meantime, all of this is ready. Look at it, beautiful. And that's pretty much the main building block sorted. I'm going to go ahead and grab white dye, because white stained glass does look a little bit better. And it's not like I'm in any shortage of bone meal. Nicely done. And also do a nice little firework rocket top up. The next thing I'm going to need quite a lot of is observers. That requires nether quartz, which I, I have none of. And I require over four stacks of them. So I'm hoping that if I go all the way along here, that the bartering farm will sort me out. But it's entirely possible I've already ransacked it, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> We're about to find out. Oh, we've got loads. Look at that. Beautiful. That solves that problem. Better if I go back through this slice portal, which is kind of annoying, but it's, it, it, yeah, it, it just makes everything, because the portals don't link properly very well. Getting back through is annoying, but if I do it, I end up in that one. Now to grab redstone, cobblestone, and get crafting. Gives me all of those that I need. I want some brick walls, terracotta, obsidian, slime, blue ice, which I don't have enough of. Thankfully, I, I know where there's an iceberg around here, which will have plenty of blue ice underneath. If I can find it, that is. Finally. That's more than enough. So there's no point spending time mining for more. I also require pistons, note blocks, trap doors and walls, repeaters, iron trap doors, fletching tables, and I needed a bunch of other items which I've collected. All the TNT will be needed at some point. I'm, I'm probably going to leave it here for now because it's, it's just going to clog up my inventory. And one of the crucial thing 
is gonna be some beds. Mainly because I need way, way more villagers to fill up the farm. Very conveniently though, I dug the perimeter right by a village. So as long as I have enough of them, it won't be difficult to transport them to the farm. Plus they're gonna need quite a bit of bread to do some breeding. Whilst I wait for them to wake up, I can begin building. This is pretty much the middle and it's aligned in the right part of the chunk. And this is the height that it needs to be. I'm also gonna need a villager for this first slot, so I'd, <laughs> I'd better go and kidnap one. You little fella will be perfect for the project. No, no, not you as well. Single file, one at a time. They're all, <laughs> they all wanna go. Rest of them are needed for breeding. I only need to kidnap one of you. Precarious bridge we go to try and land it all the way on this. But I tell you, if I miss this jump, it's good. Oh, this is gonna be annoying now. New plan. I'll, I'll just kidnap another villager. It's easier. <laughs> this time I'd better not miss. Welcome to your new home. And now I can continue the building, which actually just involves getting more villagers into this place. I reckon this time a higher up bridge is probably the answer. That way this bridge can be used for multiple villagers and it's a bit easier for me to get to. Or at least it would be if I, if I build to the right side. This is not where the villagers are. Good job I have more than enough dirt, isn't it? There we go. Problem solved. And I have been getting baby villagers here and there, which is handy. But if I had used my brain, I would have had them breeding whilst I was doing the entire room together. Yeah, it's not the most efficient thing, but I only need about 15 of them, so not too crazy of an amount. Down we go. And that is one of them in. Oh man, you're too small for that. You could just walk out. That's not part of the plan. I'll temporarily block that up and the gate should hold you into position. I'll add all the villagers in probably towards the end because I'm, I'm going to struggle. So yeah, but we're, we're just going to get on with more redstone-y kind of things that, that will actually make the farm work. Walls connected to glass are just basically a great way to send a signal up loads and loads of blocks. I've got another little spot here that's going to have three villagers. It's going to be, I think, 15 villagers uh, in total. Well, 16 including the one at the very bottom. But for now, a lot of the build is just me placing glass and placing walls. Whilst of course making sure the villagers keep breeding. I've actually now got to a level where things are a little different. This is where all the XP collection is gonna be going. So this is where the ravagers are gonna fall and die and the, the saddles will get burned on this netherrack and the XP is going to be sent into a shoot that will go all the way up to the player. And so that's where the things like blue ice really start to come in. And it's this slime block right here, which is what's gonna fire the XP upwards. So every time like the raid does like a cycle thing and the walls update this observer, there's gonna be another observer looking at the rails and then that's gonna go ahead and go through here, update the piston, fire up the XP. The water shoot areas are starting to take shape, but I do wanna light this netherrack on fire, but the, the rain is a problem, however, iron bars should stop it from going out. So there we go. That's uh, that's gonna get rid of all saddles. Then I can grab water and have it in here like so. And trapdoors are gonna just kind of split everything up. So yeah, the XP is what is gonna be flowing along the water. That should be mission accomplished. That's the Ravager bit sorted. And there's also gonna be another section for villagers in here. So you can see Ravagers will fall down here, die, saddles go, XP into there. It's gonna involve looting TNT is how I get the XP from them still. It's, it's a little bit complicated, but I'll, I'll explain it when we when we get higher up. For now, I'm more bothered about seeing how my army of villagers is getting on. It does look as though the numbers are growing and there's loads of baby villagers. Is it bread? Don't steal all the bread. Well, I guess they're okay as long as they share it when they grow up. Ideally, I'd just keep building this up and up, but I'm not gonna be able to get the villagers past if I'm not careful, so. I think I'm gonna see if I can snake something around here. Then they can be brought into there. And whilst I wait for those baby ones to grow up, I'll keep expanding these tubes. This is as high as I'm gonna go for now because at this point there's gonna be new mechanisms that, you know, make the ravagers get attached to TNT and all sorts of stuff like that. As you can see, it's, it's a very big shoot <laughs> that uh, it takes to, uh, to fall damage kill a ravager. On the positive side, during all of that time, loads and loads, look at all these, look at them all. More than enough villagers for the project, so I'm going to start grabbing them. Probably be morning by the time I get them all there anyway, by which time even more villagers will have breeded. As we said, the tubes look really cool from all the way over here, I love them. All right, mate, don't be shy. This is just a completely normal safe bridge. Yeah, we've only had one guy fall down. <laughs> so statistically, you're very, very safe. First one is in and trapped by the gate. That's those three done. Now to add the mechanism above their head. I'm building another mechanism here that will make the XP carry on being shot up because it gets shot up once, but then it needs to kind of keep being shot up by pistons to get all the way to the very top. One piston push on its own just wouldn't be enough. And I basically just kept building these over and over again 
until I've got as high as I need to be. There's another spot for villagers right here and one above. So I'm going to go ahead and get all the villagers in because I've still got six down there that need adding as well. And because it's daytime, I can use the job site blocks to lure the villagers up the stairs so I don't have to worry about not being able to boat them up here. It has been painful getting them to go up this high, but that's it. Just, just go in there by yourself, please. He's resisting. Don't resist. Come on, just go in the hole. Come on. <laughs> don't do this to me. I'm not letting you get out of here now. There we go. I just got to, oh, got to reach that gate and close it. Thank goodness for that. And with that out the way, building work can continue. And so this is the platform where things are going to really start happening, which makes a nice change than just building these glass tubes all day. Although then again, it does mean that things get a little bit more complicated when I have to start doing redstone, which, you know, maybe, maybe it's not quite as good. I get honey down along here and also along here, as well as more glass. And this middle bit is actually where the powdered snow comes in handy. Yeah, you remember that, that we got absolutely ages ago. It's finally being put to use. And one good thing about this build is it's basically symmetrical, so everything I'm building on that side, I'm doing on this side, which means I only have to remember each thing once, you know, and then I can just copy it across. Now, these signs are going to be very important, as they have to hold water in the middle. And from there, I can just keep building everything up. It's the never-ending story of the super long tubes. And now, this bit right here is the platform where the player is going to stand. And basically, I'll just be putting loads of TNT in here. How that TNT gets lit and registers as me lighting the TNT Oh, that's another story completely. Now for more straightforward building upwards. The glazed terracotta is just so that the slime doesn't move it. I'm going to put a creeper head here so that I can't fall down this hole, but the XP can get up it. Since it does use a lot of TNT, this machine, there's going to be a shulker box loader uh, with a, a shulker there. So I'll have loads of um, TNT filled shulker boxes going into it and it'll just constantly keep replenishing. It is all getting there. I've got a uh, another dropper right uh, in, in that position. Now, these platforms here on both sides iron bars, they're for the evokers that I got all that time ago so that I can make vex suppressors so that I don't get killed by vexes while using the farm. Would rather not die. You know, I've got to 5,000 days. I'd, I'd like to last a bit longer. On this slab here, that is exactly where a golem is going to go. And exactly the same on this one too. These walls are to hold the boats that I, the uh, vexes are going to go into. I, I, I can't remember exactly how... You do it. I might have to, to look it up because I did it on the other one. I just remember you have to like use dispensers to dispense the boats onto water. Otherwise, it it just doesn't work. So it could be a bit of a finicky process. At some point, there does need to be TNT in this chute, but I, I didn't put it in at the moment just in case something goes wrong and I, I blow everything up some. I'm purposely not placing TNT. That could be the very last thing to be done. But the redstone side of things are very, very close to being done. Just a few little extra minor bits to finish. These stairs right here are a border for a water pool that's going to go in here. That's what the TNT are going to fall into, and that's what's going to make sure that the whole thing just doesn't go, go up in, you know, go kaboom, basically. The water will basically mean that the mobs get damaged, which will then mean that I am eligible to receive the XP when they die. But as I said, the entire machine will not blow up. The only annoying thing about it is it requires a lot of buckets of water. I have these two, which allows me to make an infinite water source. But when you're waterlogging something, yeah, infinite water sources aren't aren't a thing. So instead, I've got to build something fancy like this and manually add the water <laughs> one by one. Oh, well, at least it'll be worth it when the farm is finished. Both sides are done. Now for some obsidian above this, which is even more protection. Right here, we've got portals which will get rid of excess mobs. Back in the day, you would use these portals to get rid of ravagers, but well, now we're going to be using those ravagers for XP, so we, we need them. So we're going to go ahead and put turtle eggs here just to get rid of any pigmen that might spawn. And the big key with this farm is that you have to split the ravages up and destroy the XP from all the evokers of indicators because they're worth less and would actually cause you to get less XP per hour based on how quickly someone can absorb XP. Bet that makes absolutely no sense, but that's why this farm has not been done before because... Yeah, it's not about creating loads of XP orbs, it's about creating loads of high-value XP orbs. Anyway, enough of that, I shall uh, get these portals built. And yes, it is now day 5001, and my editor is, is not going to let me forget about it. Don't really have time for going overtime on this, but considering that it has to be out in like 12 hours, and we're, we're all still going hands on deck. Guys, you got to leave a like and subscribe, a lot of hard work goes into these from the editors and me burning the candles at both ends. Now, there needs to be some water there, and if, I get, if I've got this bit wrong, everything's going to break so i hope but putting water there yeah it, it all flows okay although it should flow onto here as well i'll just quickly grab some water pretty sure if i do that and then that there we go basically what i'm building up here um how's that gonna go i need to realize it's gonna be a system that collects an arrow and the arrow is what's gonna like if they're gonna keep it's gonna keep the arrow alive you know like so it doesn't despawn and that arrow is going to keep moving and it's going to keep lighting the tnt and because it's an arrow that i will have shot that is what will make it so that it keeps, it gives me the XP when it does damage to 
all the, uh, the the ravages. It's times like these that make me realize I'm not that great at explaining how things work sometimes. But the TNT has to do damage to all the mobs because I also need to get Bad Omen back as well. So that's why it's like a, a, a double whammy thing. But then it's the, the TNT never kills them. It just causes them to die and then uh, they get split up like that. Spawn proof the portals with slabs. I can't believe it. I'm actually so, so close to being done. The lava is going to be the thing that causes the arrow to be on fire, which then allows it to light the TNT. Then a bit more redstone up here, complete with lightning rod at the top so that I don't get struck by lightning. And that, ladies and gentlemen, it's almost the fastest XP farm complete if it weren't for one missing mob. Yes, I have to get the stupid evokers through and set up the vex suppressors. And uh, yeah, it's just going to be... Why did I just do that? I don't know. <laughs> but also on the other side of both these portals is going to have to be a massive lava pit. So that needs sorting. Um, but first, I'm going to link these and use these portals to send the evokers through. So that it'll all get worked out. So first things first, portal linking. This is the spot. Because the portals are so close, it would be so close together. They can basically just come through the same portal, which is nice. And I'll get it lit, grab an egg, test it out. Looks to be working absolutely perfectly. So now there's a long staircase upwards with rails on top that connects up to the evokers. I'm just taking one at a time because that's that's a much safer way to do it. I'll stop him right about there and then, oh no, don't you dare go all the way back now. There we go. Oh, uh, well, he stopped anyway. Now to bring the other one and keep him uh, right about here. I'll be back for you two later. Because now I need to do some fancy stuff to make this work. First thing I'll need is blocks underneath here because I'm going to be waterlogging the slabs. That will allow me to... Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't think it was going to break anything, but I... I couldn't be too careful. Let's add a few blocks around here so we don't have any more leakages. Then I should be able to safely do it. There we go. That's much better. I have to grab even more water. And then these upside down dispensers. Each dispenser needs five boats. Then levers can be used, as you can see, to put them all in the same place. So you end up with five all on the exact same block. This is probably going to annoy me a lot, but I only have spruce wood on me now. So I'm putting a mixture of spruce and oak boats here. Not ideal, but you know what? just have to live with it. Apparently completely forgot to put water in. You can see, if you don't have water there, that's that's what happens. <laughs> you just end up with a random item, which is, uh, is not what you want. Instead, you want it to actually dispense the boat itself. Now I can remove the water and do the exact same thing on this side. All the boats are done. It's actually a very simple and smart strategy. And my strategy to get rid of the water is just to do that, you know, pick it up and... Uh, Place a block on it and replenish the egg. Temporarily break this portal because I know this one will also link and I think a temporary one just connecting will, will just make life a little bit easier. Down this exact hole is where I'm going to want him to go. I've got a little corner on here. I'm out of powered rails, but if I go through this portal, I can mine up all of these to get more since they're no longer in use. Let's get this guy going up the ramp. I'm hoping he doesn't see me. Yeah, no idea. Also, I'm just going to have to remember to break this. There, oh, there we go. Stupid Vex in there. No, get out. This is annoying. Okay, uh, this, this just makes things a little bit... Get in there, that's it. We're all right, we saved it. Hopefully, I can just go... Oh, no. Oh, come on, SP. That's it. Push him. He's going in just where he should be. Now I only have to modify the track and do the exact same thing again. There we go. This time, it was much more straightforward. Now to remove everything, like these portals, spawn the golems, place a few repeaters that I definitely cannot forget about. And finally, I can begin the giant lava cube. Once that's done, the farm will be 100% completed. That's it done. I, I didn't put a roof on it. I kind of forgot to and I, I put all my blocks back. I hope it works. I hope the whole farm works. If it doesn't, then I'm I'm just in big trouble because I, I could really do me going to bed and I've spent a long time building this. Now in here go full shulker boxes of TNT. I can dispense the first box there as you can see. Now TNT is going into there. The only possible thing I can think could go wrong is if I've missed a block somewhere and a raid spawns down there. That's the only possible thing. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Let's go and kill one of these pillager captains down there. Then I'll be able to put this entire farm to the test. So let's take out one of these. This is this is probably the easiest bit actually, and I'm quite glad I built this entire system. From here, I need to stand on this platform and flick this lever. And if everything's working correctly, that the, the machine should be doing what it should be doing. And all the raiders will be falling into that blast chamber. You can kind of see them. You can see some ravagers going down there already. So the next bit is to come up here, fire one singular arrow and push this button. Then I just start placing TNT. Eventually the TNT will get ignited by the arrow. And there we go. It's taking out the raiders. It's slowly getting me XP. Well, it will at least get me XP when it finally travels all the way back up to me. That's, it's just going to take a moment for that. And the farm takes a few minutes to get to full speed. I think I hear XP. I can't actually tell if I'm getting the XP. It could just be repairing my armor. Yes, I can hear it. Look at that. And now look how fast 
it's going okay because i have 338 levels it doesn't look that fast but the, the farm's still getting up to full speed and just look at how fast the bars are now going up it's going insanely fast it, i think it's at full speed this ladies and gentlemen is the fastest ever xp farm at least in recent versions of minecraft that's possible of anyone else has built twice as fast as a guardian farm and it doesn't use hunger like other raid farms because you're using TNT. I'm never going to get hungry. So there's not much else I can do other than sit, chill and place TNT. And I'm going to keep that going until I get to level 500. And there we have it. Level 500. In the next episode, I'm going to get to level 737 and maybe even 1000. This really does make life so, so much better.